Sonic Speaks. Okay. Hi there, and welcome to our late first edition of Sonic Speaks. I'm Jack Ward, and here with my erstwhile companion of the talkies, the dramaturge of detectives, the sonorist of sleuthing, the scribbler of superheroes, the poet of the panda, the one and the only Greg Taylor. How are you tonight there, Greg? Oh, you kid. You stayed up all night thinking of that, and it was totally worth it. <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm well, my friend. How are you? Oh, I'm good, but uh, you know, I have a I have a bone to pick with you, so I'm going to start off with that. Well, sure, lead right in, yeah. All right, here's the first bone I'm going to pick. I don't know if I have more, but we're going to we're about to release our 500th regular season episode of the Sonic Society. 700 500 is a lot of episodes. 700 is even more. That's all told when you have all the summer season stuff and everything. And you and I used to very thoughtfully and somewhat smugly intently stroke our non-existent beards and talk about how we were outlasting all those other guys in short pants. And we did. Coming up in podcasts and audio drama. And now you're leaping out of our Canadian rowboat and leaving me all alone. Is it true you've jumped the audio drama ship? Uh, no, that's uh, not particularly accurate. Um, we're doing some different stuff. I never said I wouldn't go back to it. Oh, okay, good. Uh, but, you know, the the truth of the matter is, and, you know, we do our own thing. We do our stuff. We do uh, different kinds of things. Sure. Um, and uh, God knows, in, in addition to, you know, creating your own shows, you, uh, and you provide a, a, a venue in a lot of ways for a lot of different people and a discussion, a sounding board. And, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a different sort of thing. We're just, you know, straight up making the shows and doing the shows. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, uh, going into, well, whether it's going into season uh, 12 or coming out of season 11 or what have you, um, there was a, a sense of... You know, having done a couple of hundred episodes, I mean, produced more, but written straight up a couple of hundred episodes of uh, The Red Panda and Blackjack Justice, and uh, a sense that I could see the next 11 or 12 years and exactly everything that would happen in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes that is a comfortable feeling. And sometimes it is a mildly panic-inducing one. Um, <laughs> it wasn't really a... Uh, they, they had both come to a, a, a place, I would say. Certainly with um, the goal with the Red Panda from the, from the beginning um, was to do what had only very rarely really been done and I say very rarely, so I don't look like an ignoramus, but the truth is I can't think of another example of telling uh, a single creator mystery man story from just about the beginning to round about the end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly there are, there are gaps, there are stories untold, there are things referred to that have never been spelled out. There's lots of, we skipped the year 1940, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> um, there's, there's lots of stuff. Um, still uh, theoretically in there, but to to while well, telling an adventure story, also do some very gradual, long form character development and 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 build the world and the story and the life of these uh, heroes, and let them be as uh, people, and see where it it uh, takes the story and where it takes them, and it, it took them to a point of now. I'm just going to say, uh, this is, you know, this is not news, this is a couple seasons old, but if you're b way behind on your Red Panda or something like that, you just don't want to, I'm just going to say spoilers now, and you can stop listening to the episode, because I'm not going <laughs> to warn you again, 
It's it's fine. I don't want to mess with anybody's. That's the thing. That's the thing about creating these things and putting them on the internet. Somebody's always getting on board for the very first time. That's right. That's right. Um, every week I'm getting emails from people saying, oh my gosh, these are great. I'm up to episode eight. I'm like, well, <laughs> buckle up, Buttercup, because you've got a long ride. And then you hear from them like 34 days later and they've listened to the entire show. I'm like, you're a maniac. <laughs> um uh, it's glorious, you know. I, I enjoy it so much, but um, you know, you trip across these people on their, your Twitter stream that are, you know, they're they're you know mid season four and they're freaking out, man. <laughs> and uh, and it's awesome. I'm like, it's okay, it's relaxed, everything's gonna be okay. Um, so that's awesome. So yeah, spoilers, but you know, we get to the point um, where they where um, um, Gus and Kit want to move on but feel that they can't mm -hmm. to there's a possibility to move on because there, there were several teases throughout the process of, Oh, is this the next guy? Is this the guy we can train and trust to the city? Right. And it didn't work out or he was killed by the Nazi Ubermensch or, you know, like mm -hmm. lots of things happened along the way. Um, and, uh, and, and then they get to the point where there's this new, and my gosh, it's Harry Kelly, who is like everybody's kid brother. And this is, this is perfect. Can we make this work? And then reaching the point where they have to make it work. They're essentially blackmailed into their own retirement that they've actually wanted all this time. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it works out perfectly. And the, uh, and we bring them to that point and don't exactly leave them there. We did in, uh, season, I'm going to say 11. I think it's 11. Mm -hmm. See how the years just like, take you out back and just beat the tar out of you? I'm going to say 11. Okay. Um, and uh, we did a... Uh, um, and, and I was very excited about this. We get to... You, you've been working to... You've, you've got this grand vision and you say, we're going to take it here and we can't rush it, but I know what's going to happen in World War II. And we'd have recording sessions and people would say, so uh, did you ever think about what happens with the genie? I'm like, well, actually, yes. Yeah, so it's going to be this and this and this. And their eyes get big like saucers and they're like, my God, I knew he was insane, but I didn't know it was this bad. Um, and, you know, just carrying around this, this arc and, and, and this, uh, these stories um, and wanting to bring it to that point, but knowing that if you rush to get to that point, it's all just going to be for nothing. And so you take your time and you, and you do the slow build. Uh, and I got to the point and I was really very excited by the idea for the season that followed, season 11, where we would go back and tell different stories from throughout the continuity. And I, I, was, I was excited to, to get into that, and it was a lot of fun to come and tell stories from different uh, uh, points in their history. And there was always a framing device of, we see them now. We, we would start with Gus or Kit or, you know, some other characters. Um, further along in the continuity, after, when they've returned to their lives, when they're, you know, being... You know the the inventor and the uh, and the associate editor of the Daily Chronicle, and and they're living their lives together, and they find some reason to look back at something that happened, and then we go back and we spend time in there, and it was super fun to do, but it also I missed, I missed the pressure of that arc and that need to get to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, and sometimes for the very first time in this long, long process of so many pages. Oh, I found a season's worth of scripts behind a, in, in a drawer. I'm like, oh, look at this. Must be, this must be five years worth. No, that's a year's worth. That's one year. Look at all the trees you've murdered in the course of making this. It's incredible. Um, I, di I spent a summer planting trees in, uh, in my university year, so I get to use all the toilet paper that I want. Um, but, uh, uh, and telephone poles, which is really what I was planting. Um, but but still, a lot of paper, a lot of lot of, and, and a lot of my life spent doing that, and it's great. I enjoyed it, but um, I, 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 I found that I missed the imperative. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, okay, maybe that's, I don't want this to turn into work. It was still play, but the, frankly, this is not profitable enough to be work at the moment. You know, this has got to be play. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's uh, a, a niceness to it. And then with Blackjack... Of course, as it turns out, now I was already wandering down this road of saying, you know, we need to find some other stuff to be releasing 
for some other reasons that I'm going to yak about in a minute. But uh, we did get to the point where, uh, you know, we were recording some of the other things that I'll talk about in a bit. And we got to, um, um, we were coming up to that. And uh, Chris Mott, who uh, uh, played uh, Blackjack Justice uh, for the whole series run, uh, told me that he really had to um, go and sign uh, an ACTRA card. ACTRA is the uh, film and television and radio um, uh, actors uh, union. Mm -hmm. And it uh, meant that he had to give up his independent status and his right to, you know, come here and do this if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and I always said, and I think I'm on record as saying with you on more than one occasion, that I would do Blackjack Justice as long as Chris and Andrea wanted to. Um, but in spite of the uh, hundreds of uh, <laughs> suggestions uh, uh, that, you know, let's do an early days of Trixie Dixon series. No, I don't want to do that. Let's recast it with a different actor. No, I don't want to do that. Well, no, I to be fair, though, to be fair, let's go back to, um, you know, The Shadow. Everybody has their favorite actor as The Shadow, you know. Sure. With, you, most of them, it's Orson Welles. You know, Christopher Mott will probably always be my favorite actor for for Blackjack, and I'm the biggest one. Like I hear this from Bill Hallwig all the time. I was like, I would rather almost reshoot an entire audio drama than recast someone halfway through a role, no matter what. So I I, I feel that, but in the same way, I have to ask that question because you know, is it worth losing out on all the great Blackjack stories that could be? Because actors do come and go. I mean, if you look at old-time radio, can you think of too many of them in long-running thing that, that, that weren't replaced, even for a short time? Sure, but after Howard Duff left Sam Spade, it was garbage. True. Like, they did another season, and it's, it's an abomination. True, absolutely. Uh, it, it is not good. Um, and, and you're right. There, there were things that were, um, you know, you listen to Nero Wolf, and they never, they had Sidney Greenstreet doing yep. Nero Wolf, but they never had the budget to cast someone as, in the recurring role of Archie Goodman. So Archie is like a different actor almost every episode. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, and it's uh, it, when, you're, when you're listening once a week, you can probably put up with it. When you're listening like a bunch of episodes in a row, you're like, okay, this is nuts. <laughs> and some of them are great, and some of them are not. But you never really form that bond. Mm -hmm. um, if, for me, because they were, you know, I mean, because there's not a writer in a room and a director... You know, telling the guys how he wants the episode mixed, and an actor performing with everybody. This is all. This is all me. Mm -hmm. So because I'm in the booth working with people, um, it, it from the very earliest days, uh, except for like the the first twelve blackjack scripts, um, when the first twelve red panda scripts were written before we recorded anything, and those were worked on and read and and workshop just by Clarissa and me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we divvy up the parts, and we just read them. This was oh, okay. this was a uh, that was date night, um, <laughs> and, uh, and it worked out pretty well. Uh, but uh, uh, but since that time, since we went in with those scripts and went into the benefits of dating an actress, right? Oh uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah. In this case, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, and a very talented one, I might yeah, say. Uh, well, I agree, obviously. Um, but uh, since that time. Um, what Chris and Andrea bring to the roles is so integral to the role that anyone else would have to be. And, you know, we spent a summer doing this one summer when I went, I really don't want to do a, a summer showcase series. This is when we're still doing the summer showcase. I'm like, ah, I don't want to mm -hmm. do it. I don't know anybody who's got scripts right now. And I don't know that there's anything I really want to do. Let's do, and we ended up doing the series, the short run series, play it again, where we took some old scripts that was and we mixed fun. it up, and we all played different parts, and we did things, and it was it was fun for the long time listeners. I don't know what anyone mm -hmm. else would make of it, but we were really kind of keeping the feed warm over the summer, mm -hmm. um, and you know we got to have a bunch of other people have a, a crack at Jack Justice, and it not the same. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't remember if I did one. I don't remember. Um, I can't remember either. There was one. There was one episode in in the run where we had to have um, uh, a different. We had to, Stephen Burley did uh, um, Freddie the Finger mm -hmm. because uh, Peter Nickel had had to fly out to Alberta. His father was right. ill, um, and uh, uh, so that's there. And he and he did a good job, but it was it was a one off, and Peter was back. And then um, you know another thing that really sort of laid heavy in my heart with Blackjack. I mean, Freddie would only be in a couple episodes a year. 
Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Peter had uh, actually moved back out west now. Um, mm. So he wasn't really, you know, and we did kind of write the character out in a, in a gentle way, sort of in a, uh, I was a communist for the FBI uh, nod. Right. Um, and uh, so you could have had, you could have had better call Freddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he you're, still you're... lives out in yeah, uh, yeah. Calgary, you know, there's not <laughs> really right. a good solution for this. So in, in a lot of ways, I was like, you know, right now doing this um i don't i feel like we haven't i feel like we haven't made a bad show and i don't know mm. if we if i let this get tired you know if i mm. if i let it be heavy in my heart or not what it was then uh and it's gonna end up being something i'm not proud of and i, and I am proud of it so uh um so you're dick van uh, dyke you? and there were also now in all fairness one of the things that became the distraction, and and you know this, writing your own content uh, aside from uh, Sonic Society, writing for your own productions, um, the writing is uh, it's a tremendous amount of work. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, I was having some um, opportunities to write other things. You get on this treadmill. And you're like, I gotta mm -hmm. do this, I gotta do this, I gotta I got this many episodes to do for the next session, it's gonna be a this and a this, and I got this, and I need this many pages, so I need this many pages a day. And that's it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and it had settled into a nice, the schedule had been all over the place over the years, but it was, you know, get up super early in the morning, write until it's time to start in a new day, mm -hmm. and uh, and carry on. And uh, and that was fine, you know, it was, it was certainly manageable, but there certainly was no time to do anything else else right so you know for example i got offered uh, um a chance to write a uh um a kids book and an interactive kids mm -hmm. book i think we talked about this last year um yeah and uh um and that was in in addition to and and then a, a couple more that aren't out yet I, I don't know when that's happening but uh uh and that was that was fun and it was neat and it was uh and it was uh, a, a different energy and a different uh um you know something uh, energizing um and say okay well that's interesting i'd love to do more of that but if you're going to i mean this is the other thing it's the difference between creating for yourself of saying you know the, i have the, i got a barn we're gonna put on a show and uh i got some <laughs> uh, i got some folks over here who are gonna be in it and this is what we're gonna do and oh look a million people just showed up on the internet hello everybody <laughs> that's great um so you're really the andy hardy of, of audio drama is what you're saying i've always been the andy hardy of audio dramas and you, <laughs> in your you heart go. you know that's true um, that's true. it's, uh, uh, I'd like that on my tombstone. If you can make the arrangements, that would be, that would be grand. Uh, there you go. but, um, uh, with the opportunity to do some, some other stuff and, and take energy from it. And, and yeah, there was, uh, um, some things that had grown organically out of the, the shows and, and the, the, uh, comic series and things, but after, uh, and, and, and they, you know, uh, some opportunities there and since some cool stuff happened, um, with the, uh, um, the, the Red Panda comics. Um, but uh, it also ended up being, you know, I think after several years of working on that, I know the exact same number of people in the comics industry that I knew after about like two weeks. In the, it's really, there was never really like a giant breakthrough in there. And I'm like, okay, that's mm -hmm. fine. But you think this could possibly, these cool things happen and you think the cool things can lead to an opportunity, but they don't always. Um, and, right. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the kids book, I mean, it was, uh, um, it's an interactive kids book. So there'd be in between each chapter, there was, uh, it'd go back to an app and there'd be elements for them to do to unlock the next chapter and, and making the reader a character in the book, which was a really neat construct to write around. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. that was great and got nominated for a, a, a Canadian screen award. And that's great. Mm. And you think, wow, that's surely, that's a neat thing that's going to bring some opportunities. But really, when you tell people that your kid's book was nominated for a Canadian Screen Award, they look at you <laughs> like you're a demented six-year-old too stupid to think of a good lie. <laughs> like, why couldn't you think of a better lie than that? If you were a decent writer, you'd be able to think of a better lie than that, <laughs> is the implication. Um, and uh, so you're like, well, oh, okay. And you sort of move on to the next thing. Um, but... A lot of the things that I was increasingly interested in putting some time and energy into are things that, yeah, I could do the, the writing, 
But once you step away from the barn and putting on the show, or I'm going to, now that I have built an audience, I will write a novel and market to that and, you know, sell some copies and that will be awesome. Um, and it has been awesome. Mm -hmm. But if you say, let's look at a broader audience, let's approach the industry. Mm -hmm. First of all, and I know you are a proponent of uh, doing it yourself and things like that. I got to tell you, when the time comes to approach the industry, the industry looks at all of the many things that you have made, wondrous though they may be, as if you were a five-year-old who had just pooped in your hands and brought it to them and presented it at a fancy dinner party. <laughs> That's really people are like, oh, uh, it's a podcast. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. It's like Thurston Howell III. It's just, you know, smelled something terrible. Um, so uh, there's that. Mm. And you, when you encounter that, audio, uh, that attitude a couple of times, you're like, wow, okay, th there's two ways to go with this. Run 180 yards in the other direction and go back and just d do my own thing forever. Or I got to build up some other credits too, mm, okay. so that there can be some other opportunities. And uh, but following those and chasing those, and uh, you know, when working on a uh, uh, on a, it's called a middle grade. It appears to be the industry term. A, a middle grade uh, a detective novel mm -hmm. um, with another girl detective. I, I do you know run a lot of the same territory called Abigail Brannigan. Mm -hmm. uh, Abigail Brannigan investigates. Um, and that seems to now be uh, getting somewhere, and I, I hope that in the uh, very near future you will be able to go to a store and purchase your own copy. It looks like that is actually happening. That'd be wonderful. Looks like. Um, it's great. It's great. But, you know, the process of getting from there, to the, it's, it is so, it's more work than to write the book by far. Mm -hmm. Um, to chase after and and submit and subject yourself to the uh, delightful series of humiliations that is so reminiscent of you know uh why i got out of stage acting mm. uh that uh you're like wow i must i'm super into deprivations for some reason yay um and uh but uh, and then that's and it was impossible to keep that up and write a, a new season of more of the same isn't it time for you to maybe get an agent though oh my beloved that's part of the whole series of ridiculous humility. Like there are, you know, even even more so than in acting, where you can get, you know, if you have a face that is not either not completely ugly or interestingly ugly, you can get like a a, a mid grade kind of get you some commercial work agent, you know, with a, a little bit of effort, um, and uh, and that's fine. Literary agents, there are very few of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have things that they definitely are interested in and things that they are not. Mm -hmm. um, the overwhelming majority of them in this country have no interest in anything that smells of, uh, of genre fiction. Hmm. Yes, that's um, true. Uh, others, others want nothing to do with um, uh, young reader stuff. Some do, some specifically do, but there's so few. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, blind submissions are only going to get you so much. There are, you know, certain publishers that will take unsolicited submissions, but they don't necessarily take them seriously. They kind of put them on a pile and they'll send you a note. And it's, it is, it's, it's a process. And everybody who comes to write a book or work on a book or flog a book has to go through the same process unless they are, you know, already a celebrity or something. So there's mm. no sense complaining about it. It's just what it is. But it's work. It's right. it is its own thing. It takes time and energy, energy especially. It, it sucks it out of you, um, just to do that, and also trying to be continuing with the work that is the work that you want to do. So something something had to give, and we uh, we have produced, we have more releases in season twelve, uh, ever. Uh, than we've ever ever had uh, at our at our height in audio drama we were doing um uh two ep we two episodes two a month, month. Well, i guess uh, yep. for for a period we were doing uh, uh one every two weeks right there were like a couple seasons that were 26 episodes yeah um it's uh, been weekly releases since the fall um we took our uh, uh our comic book releases and gave them the the um uh video comic the motion comic treatment uh, mm -hmm. our fellow Stephen Burley uh, cooked those up for us, and they're fantastic. And uh, we did uh, a set. 
we did a set as a, a, a sort of a Kickstarter project to raise funds to continue the comic series, really. And we made the thing because we said we'd make the thing, but everybody mm-hmm. understood we were trying to make more comics. Right. Um, but I loved the thing that we made, and I, uh, I uh, and I adored uh, the process. And it was also great that someone else did a lot of the really hard work, which is not really how things usually happen around here. I'm like, here you go, Steve Burley, and now you do all the hard work for me, please. Um, and uh, uh, and he did. Um, and so that was wonderful. That you know, sort of Saturday morning cartoon run. I was just delighted um, to get those out there into the world and kind of like let watching them do their thing. Captain America all over again or the Hulk. Remember those seventies versions? Sure, you know? sure, sure. When yeah, through yeah. his mighty shield. Yeah, I remember. That's that. right. When Captain America threw his mighty shield. Yeah. And uh, or uh, Doctor Banner, something by Gamma Rays. Turns into the Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Was that they were they were a little more sophisticated than that, but it still it it can't. But they were only more sophisticated than that because Stephen is is very very clever and he could give a lot of motion. Um, Dean uh, Kotz's drawings were always very, you know, very kinetic anyway. Um, and uh, so that was grand. And I thought, well, you know, I don't want to just release those things and then let things go cold or, or shutter things because I, I really don't know what we're going to want to do. Um, but I, and I still wanted to be doing some work. So, but right before uh, Chris signed his card and became ineligible, uh, for this kind of work, we did. Uh, we recorded the first uh, Blackjack Justice uh, novel, right? Which is narrated in alternating chapters by Jack and Trixie. So they took their own chapters of narration, and we've got thirty weeks of weekly releases um, uh, of that. Sort of mm-hmm. both projects, both of them, and they're not audio dramas, but they are the same characters that we've been working with all this time, mm-hmm. and that gives it a little bit of time. Uh, to see what happens next. Um, there certainly, there is other material available. I mean, there were, um, uh, there are three, uh, novels that were re- recorded and made available on audible and they're, they're out there in the world, but there was another red panda novel that was n- never adapted, um, mm. in that way. And that's a possibility. Um, there's another, there's a book I wrote called uh, Finn's Golem, which is honestly mm-hmm. just about my favorite thing that I've ever written and also sort of shows in some ways the limitations of, you know, you create a thing and, and it's, uh, you say, well, we're going to do some radio shows and do some adventure and mystery shows, old time radio style. People say, that's great. And they come and they listen and they have strong opinions and then they, and they, uh, feel great about it. And it's driving to say, okay, now here's this novel that sort of ties in with those and, you think, well, if it's X number of people like passionately listening every week, surely, you know, the number of people who would want to read a book or a comic or a thing is going to be nearly X. And that's not really true. No. Um, they, there was certainly, they, the, the novels did well, and it was always something that it was, you know, to be able to do that from something that you loved doing and that people connected with. But at the same time, I knew that there were like tens of thousands of people who listened regularly and were saying, where's my blackjack right. who had never read this book, even though it had been available since like 2012 or whatever. So I didn't feel too bad about putting that story. It's also a nice symmetry. If this is the last blackjack story that we'll put out through decoder ring theater, it's also the first story. It's their first meeting. Mm. Um, and uh, so there's a, a, a lovely bit of, Lovely bit of symmetry to that. And then, you know, uh, what comes further down the road? You know, we look at what is season what is season 13. I don't know. Is there some... Are we uh, adapting some novels? I don't know. Um, there's no reason... See, with where, with where the Red Panda got left, um, I can go back and do, like, one of those whenever I feel like it. If I right. have the time and the inclination to do so. Because we're already in the stage where we're telling stories from throughout the continuity and sort of seeing what happens next with them. So that's not really necessarily a commitment to say, oh, we got to do 12 now. we got to do six. You say, yeah. well, here's one. We made this yeah. one. Do you like it? Um, and so that's why I don't really see that there'd ever be a time when I would say, um, you know, barring calamity, um, that I am done with that. Uh, I don't think there's... Well, this is really any... unusual territory for you, though, right? Because usually you're ahead of the game by, like, a year or so. Do you find yourself panic- 
panicking a little bit as to because you're so well planned. No, because that game is that game has played its course. I mean, you know, it was this is if we're going to maintain a schedule of 24 or then 12 radio dramas a year mm-hmm. um, and continue the narrative that we started, you know, in 1933 through to 1946 or so. Um, then we had to do this and this and this and be so far ahead. And uh, it's it's def- now we're pretty far ahead. Like, honestly, I don't, I don't know that there's ever been a time when we've had 30 releases in the can ready to go. Um, but, uh, but we're also doing a weekly release because I think stre- trying to stretch out, an, um, you know, an, an, the novel into monthly or bi-monthly releases is just I don't think you get any momentum there. Um, and doing the same thing, again, you know, doing the same thing that we've been doing isn't going to get you anything except the same thing that we've been doing. Uh, well, you've and been that's... building a, an audience, though, through the years. I'm sure you've got a big difference in your audience as time has gone by. Oh, for sure. And that's great. And that's def- definitely one reason to not say, um, hey, I'm, you know, I'm really trying to work on this uh, on this book. Um, I'm not going to put anything out instead of doing that to say, I'm going to, we're going to, uh, record the audio for all these motion comics. And then Stephen's going to take care of the adaptation. And then we're going to, you know, produce this uh, audio adaptation of the novel and do all like that. It was not insignificant amount of work to, to get that Mm -hmm. ready. And part of it was to, you know, to keep that audience uh, uh, energized. A couple of other quick things I wanted to ask for sure. Um, yeah. So uh, you, I don't know if you've heard, but this this is a time where podcasting is finally becoming like hitting its mark, as we've been worried about and hoping, when sometimes thinking, oh, it's it's never going to do so. But now. Um, a lot of people are moving into the game big time. BBC just said they're gonna they want to be the net, next Netflix for audio uh, storytelling, which includes audio drama and all that. And they're putting their entire uh, their entire library up um, for this because they're seeing a huge value in it. So um, my my thought is, and as you said, you're finding new people coming to your feed. My big concern is if if you get so busy with your other things and you and and God God forbid we we lose the Dakota Ring Theater uh, feed on on any length of time that that something might happen and then everybody wants to find it and then it's not in the lexicon anymore and and it's not as as popular as as it should be because you you know I'm your, can you honestly say I'm probably your longest biggest fan. And uh, I will always be so, no matter what you do, because I am. I I always appreciate. My, my mom will fight you for that, but nobody <laughs> else wants the title. There you go. There you go. I won't. I won't fight your mother for it. But my, my like I said, I think you are such a maestro in in everything that you do, but such a an innovator in the modern audio theater. It would be a real shame that uh, we lost you in the, in that. We lost that voice. Uh, uh, of what you can do in that area. Now, you will be, as far well, as now, I'm concerned... Let me answer this in part before we lose this part of the thread. Um, because uh, my own concern is is more one of, uh, you know, what happens, to, what happens to this if I were to, you know, die? What if I got hit by a bus? Where's all this stuff go? Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and a part of that is it's not necessarily about legacy, but you know, the way that I got into, uh, audio drama was, um, in hearing broadcasts from the golden age of radio, big surprise. Uh, and yeah, some of those were on uh, radio when I was a kid and things like that. But when I really, 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 really geeked out over it was, you know, with the MP3, uh, revolution and, and s- complete runs of shows being pieced together and available and listening through thousands and thousands of hours of this material. So I am by nature kind of an archivist. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yes, everything lives on the, on the Libsyn page and is there. Um, It also, I have been very kind of gradually got distracted by all this, the, the extra work uh, in this year, but part of increasingly, the number one place that people go to listen to music mm-hmm. um, is actually YouTube. Yep. Which is bizarre, but like you can honestly, you can look for any record. I'm going to look for a John Denver Christmas album here on YouTube, and there it is, and there's no video. Mm-hmm. 
there's just the album cover or whatever, but it's uh, that's the video, and uh, and then it's going to play the Christmas album, and then so many people are doing that. Is that uh, kind of archiving things with just some title boards and, and things and, and putting it up on there more for a storage angle than really this is not an effort to build a new audience. Um, you know, if someday that people trip over and they're like, oh, look at that. Well, great. But that's sort of putting it out there in something that is unlikely to disappear. Uh, it's I've also um, taken the precaution of... Uh, archiving the 72 episodes of uh, Blackjack and the 120 existing episodes of the Red Panda to uh, the Internet Archive, um, where they are available for uh, free download as well. I was thinking about were that, yeah. Time, yeah, no, they're all tagged and, and file named chronologically and at a nice encode level and things and, and slapped out at Internet Archive... Um, and for whoever whoever finds them, it's also conceivable if at some point in the future I wanted, if I found that I was not releasing new content and I wanted to stop paying for the Libsyn feed, um, uh, and I, here we're talking like probably kind of far future, I don't know, mm. um, or God forbid if Libsyn wasn't around all of a sudden, they said, well, okay, we're done, peace out, everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, I could directly link the... Uh, the existing web page that we have with the, the players and things to the files on Internet Archive. So right. it's it's both a backup for our existing distribution system and, and just an overall kind of ar- literal archiving mm-hmm. of the material and uh, having it for whoever wants to find it whenever they want to find it. So there is <laughs> – and, and I'm, I'm delighted that there are, you know um, – uh, that there are people who are increasingly interested in in audio drama and and and, th- and that's that's going to continue. It's a good form. It's fun to work in. It's fun to listen to. I still love to. But this uh, is my second bit because I I'm worried. I'm concerned for you in the respect that um, I know how much fun you had with your friends and and they would come down every other month or every month for a while and and sit and record and stuff like that. But they're not there's not that reason to do that and i know with my friends if there's no particular reason you know two months turns into six months and six months turns into a year and and writing is a very lonely pursuit but audio drama at least allows you to be able to get a chance to be with your friends do you miss getting together with chris and andrea and 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 stephen burley and all those other people well sure but at the same time you know it's uh there's the the social aspect is great. Um, the the funny thing was increasingly, um, as we got further and further removed into it, um, you know, uh, I wasn't uh, doing stage work anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like these became the opportunity that I had to do some acting, which was the thing that I had always done before I was writing or anything, and this thing that I love to do. But on the one day when I got to do that, I was organizing the day. And, oh, no, okay, somebody's missed the bus, so we're going to have to reorder everything and <laughs> things. And, okay, everybody keep it down out there. And I'm like, and then you go in and you're like, oh, right, right, this is the bit where I get to do some acting. Uh, and uh, sometimes you almost forget to enjoy it. And you do enjoy it. Sure. But at the same time, um, yeah, it's uh, it's great. I, I look forward to opportunities to do that uh, in the future. I don't know exactly what we're going to do. Um, there'll be, uh, I would expect, there'd be, you see, if, if I was going to start a new series, I don't know what it would be yet. Well, there is, um, there is those, to, that, that, that so. Western you were always threatening to do. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like mixing a western i mm-hmm. like uh it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of fun yeah um i i like uh you know messing with that sort of stuff um and uh and certainly there are there are science fiction stories that uh, it would be good to tell mm-hmm. but i think that simply going off of uh, an 11 or 12 year run of two shows mm-hmm. and then say and suddenly breaking and saying okay we're going to continue with basically the same sort of thing but now it's going to be this completely different show that you don't know. I'm like, yeah, I'm not ready to go there yet. Right. Um, you know, when when I when I brought the Red Panda and Blackjack to an audience, they were fully formed and they were ready to go. 
Right. Um, nothing's, nothing's there yet. There's, there's definitely content that we can keep releasing and, and keep doing stuff and keep doing interesting stuff so that when there is something that wants to be that next thing, and maybe there's, uh, you know, maybe there's semi-regular or occasional more Red Panda. I don't know what that's going to be. Part of me has always wanted to do a true serial. It was sort of my specialty, mm -hmm. my special study um, uh, was uh, the what they call the juvenile adventure serials, which is like Superman or Captain Midnight or Little mm -hmm. Orphan Annie, where it'd be like in 10 or 15 minutes, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or five days a week. And then you look at that and you say, but that's an even bigger project than the one that I, and that was the opposite of what I was going to. So, yep. you know, that, what that would, what that would take is fresh legs. Right. What that would take is, you know, a little bit spell down the road when I've done some other stuff and said, you know what I'd really like to do? You remember when we used to do like the, the audio dramas all the time? Mm -hmm. Let's do some of that. Yep. So that I can leave a Greg Taylor-shaped hole in the wall because I'm running right through it like the Kool-Aid man again <laughs> and not be just punching a clock. Nobody wants to... Nobody should have to listen to that. Something <laughs> that is made, you know, because something has to be made now. Well, it it kind of doesn't have to. There's a lot of stuff and things and we can all get together and, and listen to and enjoy things with the, the characters that, that, that we enjoy. But if we're really going to gun into another project which will happen at some point, but it's got to be because, not because the calendar says it's time for it to happen, but because the heart says it's time for it to happen. Um, and, uh, and, and that's, that's where that is. Got to fall in love with it all over again. And that's, uh, that's, that's the key. Okay. So here's two things I'm going to pitch at you right now. Ready? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Max Taylor. Uh, I'm ready, yeah. Max Taylor, the all Canadian boy. Well, uh, <laughs> I I do like it. He did a, a couple of uh, episodes uh, for us as well. He did one episode as um, um, uh, Billy, as yep. uh, uh, William Thomas Maxwell Fenwick, uh, who is uh, uh, their son. And in uh, the Christmas episode in uh, 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 season uh, 11. Yep. Um, he was telling them a bedtime story, and it was a red panda story, and that's when they realized that every adult in his life had been telling him red panda stories <laughs> since he was born, you know. That's right. Uh, sometimes Grandma does, but those are really flying squirrel stories. And sometimes Weston does it, but he doesn't get the voices right. <laughs> and I know right. these lines because we listen to it in the car on the way to Grandma's on Christmas <laughs> Eve. These are like the Christmas specials that we listen to, and he's very, he's very proud of that. Yep. And then he was a, a young boy in, in, in another episode. Um, and, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a possibility. I, uh, I, I sort of, uh, um, uh, I, I have, I've suggested to Tessa on one occasion that, you know, maybe we should do like a, a family sitcom. Yeah. And she thought that was a pretty good idea. I, I don't think she's quite, I don't think she's quite ready for it yet, but, sure. uh, um, that's that's definitely, uh, there's, there's some, there's some possibilities there. I would... Uh, the well, the one episode of anything we did that was like a sitcom was the um, uh, the infamous uh, very decoder ring Christmas. Yes, and yeah. uh, then I did it with a laugh track. Right, and that's just that is the most exhausting thing that I've ever mixed. Yeah. It was just like whoa, just trying to make something that sounds organically like an and I don't know yeah. that it really sounds that much like it, but you get the general idea for sure. Um, from and just just playing with that is uh, uh, is hard. And, uh, but the result is, uh, uh, is a lot of fun. So could we do that in a narrative sense? Would I put a laugh track in it? Almost certainly because it's, come on, it's a laugh track. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, and I imagine like everything else that gets easier as you go along. So yeah, there's a, uh, yeah, that's possible. That's What's one. your second pitch? Oh, okay. So yeah, by the way, um, I like, I used to, I listened to Jack Armstrong, the all American boy. And there's, there was a ton of those ones that, that, you know, that, that either prepubescent or adolescent uh, kid who had all sorts of adventures and fun. That was, that's always a good thing. Uh, the other one's a little darker. In fact, it, I'm thinking, you know, go 40 years in the future, the dark panda returns. <laughs> um, I'm not, uh, I have, uh, some, uh, blasphemous opinions on the subject of Frank Miller, and I, and I shan't, I shan't get into them. They are not orthodoxy. I know that, uh, 
uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the industry uh, has spent uh, many years kind of uh, uh, kissing the ring there, and uh, um, I don't necessarily always get it. Yeah, sometimes no. I do. You know, there's there's some there's some good work, um, and, uh, and and I'm not. I don't mean to, to disparage at all, but <laughs> to 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 but to ape it directly. Now, one thing that I would like to do, if I if you know if I was suddenly just to throw myself back in, but the reason that I don't necessarily want to do it as an audio drama is really what you know. It's something that you think this is a great cartoon yeah. pitch. Um, is to take um, Kim Fenwick, their great 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 granddaughter uh-huh um who comes travels back in time on two occasions in the series right uh and and is heard from again we find that um you know she we know that she has taken on uh, a combined mantle as the the red squirrel in her own time which would be not the not too distant future at this point um and uh we know uh a little bit about her her technology and we know uh through the world war ii storyline we know that um after uh uh, maxwell falcone the stranger uh basically took the 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 treasure hoard from the council of mages of magic items that the nazis were after right and encased them in an inescapable uh a chamber with himself and and sealed it so they wouldn't go scattering all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, take sucking all of the you know these the the, the magic these um, you know the, the literal magic um, out of out of the the world and and uh, and disappearing. And we know from what happened like from his reappearance that he eventually emerges from that cocoon. We know from what was said when he was going into it that if in coming out of it the the items would be scattered all over the world, um, and uh, and we know that eventually he connects on some level with um, uh, Kim Fenwick, the the Red Squirrel. Right. So telling that story of her, you know, her first coming back, and she's been, you know, uh, the estate has for some reason on her twenty first birthday she inherits this obscure. Uh, company, mm-hmm. um, which is that is Fen Labs, which is that that Times version of Fenwick Laboratories, um, but all the rest of the is owned by the direct line, the, the sort of the the the, the main um, character mm-hmm. uh, or the the main um, heir to the Fenwick fortune. Um, who, you know, if I did it on audio drama myself, I would voice it myself and make it sound, just mess with your head, make it sound very much like the Red Panda. Um, but he would be the Lex Luthor type character. Ah. Um, and uh, so he's not a nice person at all and is using all this money for, um, and he would like to get his hands on Fenwick Lab, but just to have it, really, so that this ridiculous young girl doesn't have it, but whatever she wants to. And she discovers this whole, this... Th- all this stuff that has been put there for her mm-hmm. put in her way so that she can take on this this role mm-hmm. um so there's there's rather more sketch out than that I, and and then tell you know these slightly futuristic um adventure girl adventures um that uh, coincide and then eventually she would encounter Maxwell Falcone, who had effectively uh, regenerated, mm. in, not quite in the Doctor Who sense, but he was young as he was when we, uh, um, uh, he had when, when we saw him again in World War II, he had taken on the familiar form of himself as an older man, right? But he was actually not, right? Um, in the future, um, so and and this, what do you do to uh, a technologically based? Um, not too distant future when you suddenly open up a can of magic items on it and scatter them all over the world and reintroduce these powers that no one can really quantify or understand into that modern world. What happens to that world? So that's a neat story that I'm interested in. Sure, it's a series would, that writes I'm itself. I'm not 100% sure. People say things like that, but you and I know that's not true. <laughs> Some, somebody had still got to type this. That's right. Um, and uh, uh, so is that an audio drama? Is that a cartoon? Mm-hmm. Wow, would I love to, you know, for it to be a cartoon? Is it a series of, um, is it a, a, a series of adventure books mm-hmm. for uh, young readers? I, I find, you know, in, increasingly, you know, um, uh, you know, in working on uh, the Abigail Brannigan books, uh, um, uh, Max didn't care 
that the hero was a girl. Right. Tessa cared. Mm. She want you know she would increasingly say you know Max and I be watching going to watch something and she's like is there a girl in it? Started when she was five. Hmm. Is there a girl in it? I'm like well no there's not really. Mm-hmm. Or is there a girl in it? And I say yes there is and she says, does she just get rescued? I'm like ah uh, she gets rescued a little. And that's not what she wanted. Hmm. Um, it meant something to her. And Max just wanted it to be a good story. He didn't care. Right. Um, so I think that there's, um, uh, I think there's a potential for a kind of story like that. And, and it's something that you would traditionally say, well, if it's that kind of an adventure story, it's got to be a story about a boy. And I don't think that's true at all. No, of course not. Um, Pippi Longstocking and... Uh, and- I mean, there's tons of girls, usually little... precocious redheads, usually. <laughs> but there's lots of lots of girl adventures is, that I enjoyed reading. There is an inordinately high percentage of redheads in in, That's right. uh, in fiction. It's uh, yeah. it's a it's a thing that, and frankly, I blame you know, uh, you know, I I blame writers with secret fetishes. So you know, <laughs> let's not even get into that. Um, but. Uh, so uh, you know, I think if that can work for uh, for Abigail, that's a, um, a possibility. That you know, maybe that's uh, where Kim Fenwick's story is told. Mm. Uh, is it in books? Is it in radio? Is it a serial? Is it a half hour adventure? Is it a cartoon? I don't know. I'd love to work on that story more, and and in ways, then it's fleshing out the existing story, and in a way, all of these this other work that we've done before becomes like the uh, the special features section for. Hmm. You know the uh, the red squirrel cartoon, um, and uh, say, "Wow, did you know that some idiot actually made 120 episodes of these <laughs> adventures of you know their of of Kim's great great grandparents? Like, who would do that?" <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah, I guess it was me. <laughs> uh, so there's stuff, there's ideas. It's not stopping, but it's not going to carry on and be exactly the same as it has been because I think that we had reached a point where there was diminishing returns in that. Fair enough. Fair enough. And you know, I just had to give you the gears a bit for it. And and and. Uh, oh, I understand. And, and I expected it. Yeah, that's good. And and uh, you know, I was teasing you a bit about the, the the dark panda. That's not your temperament when it comes to your writing, and and neither should you stray from it directly. From because I like the adventure. I, you you bring fun in your adventure, and certainly that's not Frank Miller's style of things. I and and I do see uh, you doing like a nineteen. 19- 40 style uh, sitcom or or or, or later <laughs> uh, but I, I I could see that as well and I can see you doing a western and I can see this new story very clearly as well and for anybody who wants to know the like the the origin of the red squirrel that's in an earlier conversation so you go back and listen to the years and years that Greg and I have talked and he'll t- it's a great little story about how the red squirrel became I didn't forget those that, girls so. are in university now no way. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, no, they're. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm Facebook friends with the parents. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a little mind bending. I, I, nothing was coming on the feed for me, and then I realized it's because I listened to the audio. So, well, the I could, it was in iTunes. It wasn't coming into my iPod because I wasn't looking at the, so I was watching the motion capture ones on my computer and so if anybody thinks the feed is completely gone because you're listening to stuff that's not the case now things are coming onto the feed of course as as we're getting into the blackjack justice novel and and I do love an, a good audio novel as well so I've been looking forward to it and I've been enjoying it as well and and and, and I'm glad that both Christopher and and Andrea have been around for that now is is Andrea still game for doing other roles uh, she's hadn't said she wasn't you know she's not like like everybody else she doesn't necessarily know what to expect whether we're going to do you know uh more original stuff or uh whether we might uh we might do a play we might do who knows what we'll do sure but i would exp- i would certainly want her to be around yeah well i think everybody would agree with that and of course your lovely wife she hasn't given up on the acting bug through the audio world has she uh no she just you know she's not gonna organize it or anything but if i <laughs> give her a script and a good part and i have people come over and i get some donuts then yes absolutely she'll be in that's awesome that's awesome well is there anything else that y- you have in the works right now that people should be looking for there are things that i would love to have you be able to be looking for but um uh they're not there yet um uh i would say you know uh state tuned and hopefully there's some things that i can tell you about uh abigail brannigan but uh we're it's not we're not quite uh i can't actually 
I don't want to jinx things. Okay, keep our fingers crossed. Stay tuned, true believers, and we'll we'll hopefully hear from Greg Taylor with some great news. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. It's good to talk to you again. Another hour has zipped by us. I know. Well, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's good to talk you to bet. you. You bet. Take care. You too. Good night. <laughs> This has been an Electric Vicuna production.